life revolves a full cycle every time a living being is concerned. The lifetime may be short or long, depending on the creation we talk about. Take a tree for example, it can live for hundreds of years, whereas a leaf, a small part of its existence lives seasonally. What a tree experiences in its extended lifetime, a leaf knows in just a year. That's the beauty of nature and its creations. The springs and summers of beauty and vitality of the leaves turn into the autumns of fiery hues and ultimately the death of leaves every year. The dead leaves return to their peace with the nature provided they are allowed to decompose. The human interruption, however, disrupts this otherwise simple process. Sam an ordinary leaf on a tree grew like the others that surrounded him through his life. They were his companions. Their kind was same but each had an individual value just like humans have. Sam was always full of life and happy. He danced to the spring breezes, basked lazily in the summer sun washed off in the cooling rains. He just knew how to enjoy, while all his knowledge about life came from his best friend, Michael, an elder and mature leaf. Michael explained the life to him and how it goes in a cyclic manner. What lives has to die and introduced him to his surroundings and talked about the birds that came to sit with them on their branches. He explained about the sun, the moon, the stars and the seasons. Sam was always full of questions and Michael always patient with answers. Hello? Hey Michael? Hello? Aha! Uh -huh. There you are Sam. What's up? Michael, I have a question. No, 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 no. I have so many questions. <laughs> Go on. Michael, why do we live? We are a part of life, so we live. What part in life do we play? A very important one. We provide fresh air to humans. The humans? What do they give us back? Some nothing, but some do give back a lot. Like planting more trees, like the one we live on. Oh, that's wonderful. Every life form is born and then dies. It passes through different stages and similarly, for Sam and Michael, the days of greenery, vitality and vigor were beginning to pass. Sam didn't understand what was happening as October came with its chills bringing autumn along. The birds left. There were no more songs to be heard. Sam was full of questions again. Michael, why do we have so many beautiful colors? What does it mean? These are the colors of age and wisdom, and every leaf takes the color that it deserves, based on its life experiences and what it has given to the nature. What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? What's, what's happening, Michael? It's what happens in autumn. 
it's the time for us to leave leave where are we going some place else yes we'll move on to our next stage death and then become a part of nature again sounds scary michael it does sound scary but isn't where will we go when we die no one knows for sure that's the great mystery will we return in the spring we may not but life will then what has been the reason for all of this why were we here at all if we only have to fall and die it's been about the sun and the moon it's been about happy times together it's been about the shade and the old people and the children it's been about colors in fall it's been about seasons isn't that enough goodbye for now sam saying this michael falls effortlessly he appears to smile peacefully as he descends to the ground Sam looks painfully as his friend goes away. Now, he's the only one left on the tree. As he holds on, he hears a weird sound and looks down. There are many people piling up the leaves. His companions are being thrown into the fire and tortured for no fault of theirs. He sees the cloud of smoke rising up above and engulfing almost everything. It blurs his vision and he is hardly able to see and he cries as Michael isn't there anymore to counsel him. There is only a black crow making an obnoxious sound his want to live on bits at you and he finally lets go the death he feared comes to him as a relief and he sails down to the ground with a smile as he touches the ground he admires the tree he was a part of in this new position he's more comfortable than ever He closes his eyes and falls asleep. He would wish the snow to engulf him if he survives burning and become part of life again in the spring. poem by Faz Ahmed Faz one of the great poets of the Asian subcontinent paraphrases this unpleasant but inevitable event Naomi Lazad has translated it from Urdu with every nuance image and metaphor when autumn came this is the way that autumn came to the trees it stripped them down to the skin left their ebony bodies naked it shook out their hearts the yellow leaves scattered them over the ground anyone could trample them out of shape undisturbed by a single moan of protest life could have been allowed to carry on but in kashmir burning of leaves is a common phenomenon in the autumn disturbing the cycle of life trees they shed their leaves during autumn especially the trees deciduous trees what we call as deciduous trees they shed their leaves during autumn 
Kashmir being one of the temperate regions of the world, here again during autumn, uh, especially during September, October, November, you have everywhere, be that apple orchards, gardens, uh, roadsides, everywhere you have these leaves uh, falling on the ground. But it is a common practice here that all these leaves, they are burnt for charcoal purposes. As soon as the leaves touch the earth, these are collected and burned in heaps and piles, mostly to be used as coal to heat the traditional Kashmiri kangri. Not only the chinar but leaves in different orchards of Kashmir face the same fate. The process is against nature and hazardous to humans itself as it adds to pollution. Burning of charcoal in autumn season is not only a nuisance to the locals, to the inhabitants of the area, but to the visitors as well as to the other organisms of life. Naseem Bagh, which is an urban delight in the autumn, turns into a smoky nightmare in the winters. Leaf burning is a controversial environmental issue and its certain hazards can range from hazards of smoke to the human health, smog to the commuters and greenhouse gases to the environment. When leaves are burned in open air, they produce smoke and release toxic gases. During this burning process, number of particulate matter, smoke, pollutants, they add into the air and has a hazardous effect on human health as well as surroundings. Direct irritation of the linings of respiratory system and important conditions arising out of this disastrous practice are allergic rhinitis, cold, chest infections and weakening of the lining of respiratory mucosa and the linings of the eyes. The smoke contains vapors and solid compounds suspended in the air called particulate matter. The particulate matter enters the lungs and may remain there for months or even years. It increases the chances of respiratory infection, reduces lung capacity and triggers asthmatic attacks. The people exposed to this smoke are very prone to other infections of respiratory tract and eyes and skin infections too. Therefore, the practice of a burning of leaves is a multifaceted health problem in the society. Besides being an irritant, leaf smoke contains many hazardous chemicals, including carbon monoxide and benzoapyrene. Carbon monoxide binds with hemoglobin in the bloodstream and thus reduces the amount of oxygen in the blood and lungs. Carbon monoxide can be very dangerous for young children with immature lungs, smokers, the elderly and people with chronic heart or lung diseases. Benzoapyrene is known to cause cancer in animals and is believed to be a major factor in causing lung cancer. People who are exposed to these air pollutants can experience eye and nose irritation breathing difficulty, coughing and headaches. People with heart disease, asthma, emphysema or other respiratory diseases are especially sensitive to air pollutants. It impacts the health of the humans and the other living creatures. It is adding to the global warming also. Because of the high emissions of black carbon and this particulate matter, in Kashmir Valley, in the vicinity of the Kashmir Valley, we have large number of glaciers there. This suit, this black carbon gets deposited on, on these glaciers. As a result, the albedo decreases and then that results into excessive enhancing melting of the, these glaciers and that could have a large implications for many of the sectors that are dependent on water in the state of Jammu and Kashmir. According to the US Environmental Protection Agency studies, Sometimes, concentrations of air pollutants resulting from leaf burning in some areas 
cause much higher levels of air pollution than all other forms of air pollution combined, such as factories, vehicles, etc. That's why there is one alternative that we can make a compost of these leaves, fallen leaves, which is uh, both from environment point of view and economic point of view, much more beneficial. There is an immediate need to create awareness and stop burning of leaves wherever possible. The problem of leaf burning is prevalent in Kashmir and there is no proper disposal of leaves in other parts of India. If we take from economic point of view, there are some estimates that in a single big tree, when the leaves fall down, they are worth Indian rupees 2500. As compared to the charcoal, that will be hardly one or 200 rupees. So from economic point of view, it is better that we do compost of it. From uh, environment of point of view, which is more important, uh, it uh, leads to the say, say, reduction of the air pollution. Secondly, you have, uh, it's one of the mitigation activity from the climate change point of view. At present, the law of the land does not prohibit leaf burning anywhere in India. While as there are various laws, rules and regulations framed all across Europe, America and Scandinavia. There are efforts being made, for example, the University of Kashmir has set up sensors to measure the pollution levels and check the process of burning. We have about seven, eight air quality sensors that monitor the black carbon, that monitor the particulate matter, PM2.5 and PM10, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide. Now, when I look at that data for the last three years, we are seeing the air quality in Kashmir is as bad as many of the metropolitan cities. And that was very surprising because we expected that Srinagar, the air quality could be uh, much better than many of the Indian cities. Have you ever wondered whether open burning is an environmentally sound way to dispose of leaves? Or what could be the alternatives? The answer should be mostly no or none. Leaves can be left to their fate or there are ways by which leaves can be disposed of naturally. The first being mulching. Leaves make excellent mulch beneath trees, shrubs and other landscape plantings. Large trees growing in the forest naturally have a layer of decayed leaves and leaf mold beneath them. This organic layer is the home of many beneficial organisms such as earthworms and mycorrhizae. When native forest areas are disturbed and developed, the health and vigor of the remaining trees usually decline. And the other is turning leaves into compost. In composting, what we basically do is accumulate a large chunk of organic matter, especially the dried leaves, sometimes the small twigs, grass clippings, etc., into a kind of a pit that we dig. After we dig this pit, we put this uh, organic stuff, leaves, uh, together and in this pit. After putting it, we just uh, layer it with a thin layer of soil and again we make another layer of the organic waste especially these leaves and then again deposit one more a thin layer of soil i mean it depends upon upon the depth of the pit and the time that we want to keep it on and other factors uh, how many layers we would basically create in the pit and the last layer of the soil what we do is we basically cover the pit with the kind of husk or the straw or the grasses, uh, gr uh, dried grass, which basically uh, keeps the underground uh, surface uh, relatively uh, at higher temperatures, I mean, uh, hotter. Placed in a pile in the presence of adequate moisture, biodegradable organic materials such as leaves will decompose and form compost. It's a kind of manure. The best use of leaf compost is as a soil conditioner. 
It is an excellent organic soil amendment to improve the tilth of heavy clay soils or to improve the water holding capacity of sandy soils. Two important things we must keep in mind. One, that it is ecologically feasible, it is economically cheaper, it is a highly eco-friendly approach and on the other hand we are converting this waste into the resource and that resource is highly useful to us in the form of the manure which in addition to basically adding the nutrients to the soil is basically performing a lot many other functions for the crops uh, that we use them in. Environmentally friendly ways to dispose of leaves are available. So it's just the choice that we want to make. If we continue to burn the leaves, ignoring the health hazards, these life-sustaining miniature factories of nature may become the poison that will consume us all. Today may be still timely to act. Tomorrow will be too late. Sam played his role in life, but his complete purpose would only be fulfilled if he returned to where he came from, that is to the nature. Whether as mulch or compost or just naturally, it's our duty as humans to give back to the nature what it needs and let every leaf including Sam attain his eternal purpose, to be a part of the cycle of life.